Joined now by Trinity Health of New England's Dr. Syed Hussein to talk more about the coronavirus and specifically, of course, the Delta variant. Doctor, good morning. Are you there? Morning. I'm here, Tim. Ah, there we go. Okay, good. Glad I uh, got the chance to see you. Thank you once again for joining us as you do every Friday. Uh, I want to start by talking about uh, testing for the coronavirus. First of all, the PCR test, which is the standard test for the uh, coronavirus. It's my understanding that that test alone does not necessarily distinguish which variant or uh, strain of the coronavirus somebody has. Is that correct? That is correct, Tim. So there is a special test that is then done um, in special specialized labs across the country. One thing that I do want to remind viewers now is the Delta variant per most recent CDC data is consists 93% of all strains in the country now. So this is the most dominant strain uh, in, in the U.S. Yeah, and I've seen, uh, I, I think, from maybe some of the state estimations, it's a closer to 100% right here. I saw another one from Yale at about 88%. Uh, I, I guess the question for a, a given person who tests positive is, is that useful information for them to know? Does it even matter if somebody knows what variant they have? Honestly, at this point, no. We know this is a very contagious variant and also can cause more severe disease. Uh, so we really need to double down on those public health measures we've discussed during this pandemic and, and get vaccinated. Uh, we now see New Haven County, for instance, um, is now a red zone. Um, there's high community transmission of COVID-19 per the CDC, which just recently updated their map for Connecticut. And this means folks there really need to get vaccinated if they haven't. 65% of eligible people in New Haven uh, county have been uh, vaccinated, so which means there's still a significant chunk of people out there. And for people uh, who are wondering if they have gotten at one of the strains of the coronavirus, can we just go through again maybe what symptoms you might be a little more likely to see if you have the Delta variant and what symptoms you may be a little less likely to see with the Delta variant compared to the other variants in the original strain? Sure, absolutely. So the, the entire constellation of symptoms related to COVID-19 remains the same. We do see more of runny nose, headaches, sore throat type of clinical features, more so with the Delta variant, um, rather than the traditional shortness of breath, uh, loss of taste or sense of smell. But however, there should be a very low threshold that folks should have, especially now with substantial to high transmission in some of our most populous counties in Connecticut to get tested. So if you have any sort of symptoms suggestive of COVID-19, please speak to your doctor, get tested. Remember, it's important we go back to the basics and the basics are contract tracing, uh, quarantine or isolation if necessary, along with testing. Uh, what is your opinion on where the state stands in terms of its number of people hospitalized with COVID and the number of deaths we're seeing in comparison to this sharp rise in cases? Sure. So we've seen over the last several weeks a rise in the number of hospitalized cases. We felt it here at Trinity Health of New England. We're ready for any event eventuality. However, um, uh, both hospitalization and deaths are a lagging indicator, which means it takes several weeks for them to go up. We do know the state's uh, positivity rate has hovered around 3%, a little under 3% now, but that is concerning and we continue to keep a close eye on it. Uh, even though the, the rise, at least in terms of the positivity rate, has lasted well longer than a couple of weeks. I think we're maybe six or seven weeks into it right now. Uh, so we have at least gotten some uh, level of data to see what level the uh, hospitalizations and deaths are going up compared to what they should have gone up to pathways. Are we seeing that at least blunted somewhat by the, uh, by, by the vaccination campaign? No question. Absolutely, yes. So the vaccination campaign has helped. We have a significant number of people vaccinated. That, that is a firewall for this virus. But we also see some breakthrough infections, which is expected. I'm most concerned about those that are not vaccinated. If you look at states in this country that have low vaccination numbers, uh, whether it's Nebraska, Missouri, Louisiana, Florida, they're all going through horrific surges, surges that they haven't seen before during this pandemic.
Yeah, and I know we've talked before about hospital capacity. Of course, we almost neared our capacity as a state during the first wave when we hit almost 2,000. We're a long way from that. So uh, I guess what I want to know is uh, on a case-by-case -case basis for people who have severe COVID, maybe they need to be intubated. Uh, have we gotten better at pulling those people out of it and saving those lives? Because I remember very early on, 14, 15 months ago, I feel like the death rate for people once they got to the point that they needed to be given oxygen or given intubated and given oxygen. Uh, their death rate was pretty high from what I remember. Where do we stand with that now? So that's a great question. So we do have definitely more tools in our toolbox to take care of both mild to moderate uh, disease related to COVID-19 as well as severe disease. Now, having said that, the most effective weapon we have in our toolbox is to get vaccinated, yeah. to avoid this disease altogether. And if you are one of the very, very few rare instances of a breakthrough infection, chances are symptoms will be mild uh, at best. So again, I go back to the vaccination point, but yes, we do have more tools. Is it still uh, taking lives? Is it still a deadly disease? Absolutely. But this is a preventable disease because of the uh, highly safe and effective vaccines. Okay, Dr. Hussein, thank you so much. Uh, you are good at sticking to that main point, vaccination, vaccination, vaccination. That is the main way and maybe the only way out of this for uh, the people of Connecticut and the world as a whole. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to join us once again. We'll see you again soon. Thank you very much, Tim. All right, Erica, over to you.